say, have your way, almighty God. Whatever you want to do, we're open. Hallelujah, whatever you want. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give him one more hand praise before we're seated in his presence? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated, hallelujah. You know, to the series that starts today is called The Power of Honoring God in the Hard Times. And I think that's really where honoring God is. If it's not a hard time, then it's probably not really honoring God. Because when everything's going good, we have a tendency to honor ourselves. We have a tendency to honor the people that made it easy for us. We have a tendency to honor those that really don't have anything to do with it, if you think about it. And so honor to me doesn't really happen until we're in the hard times. Honor is actually the word glory or it's it's the presence of God and you know when you're in the presence of God you treat your brothers and sisters differently when you're in the presence of God you talk differently when you're in the presence of God there is a, a presence there is a manifest presence of honor in a room amen and so sometimes we hit a particularly challenging patch in life And it's difficult to see how God could make anything work together for our good. Come on, we all know the scripture. He'll make all things work together for our good, for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. We spout it off just like it's going to happen naturally. But you know what? Things don't happen naturally. They happen supernaturally. Amen? And so, you know, we'll go through an unexpected illness. I was thinking of the uh, Richards family. You know, Heather and Andrew Summers just lost their grandmother over the weekend. And, you know, we think of, you know, when we lose people that we love, we also think of people that are sick, people that are ill, people that aren't here right now because their bodies aren't working properly. How about the loss of employment? We've seen that a lot in the city here. People losing their jobs. You know, people, sure, they get severance pay, but, you know, that runs out too. You know, what what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you've planned all your life that you're going to retire in a certain company and then the company lets you go? You've given them your best. Or that you run out of your warm market. You know, you're a salesperson and you know what? There's just not enough customers in this area of the country to be able to facilitate the income that you're needing. Come on, those are some hard times. You know, we we need to understand that broken relationships happen. Not just broken relationships happen, but relationships don't happen when we want them to happen. People that want to get married and the biological clock is going tick, 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 tick. And they're thinking, I wanted children. I wanted a spouse. I wanted to spend my life with someone. And it just seems like it's a hard time. The hands keep moving, but not in our direction. You know, I I think of a wayward child. You know, I I praise God every day that my kids are are doing so good. I wish I'd had 10 of them. You know, I don't think no matter how many you have, you've had enough. You know, maybe that's why they had so many in in the Old Testament. You know, I don't know, but maybe we need to get back to that. But whatever your valley might be, you might be asking, how could this possibly work for my good? I believe the word of God, but you said all things? I don't see how this thing's gonna work for my good. I mean, I I know about those other people. I I can see where you're going to work all things for good in their life. But right here, right now, I don't see it, God. I don't see it. See, that's the kind of honor that we need to have for God. In the midst of whatever it is that seems to be going down the drain in your life, that you can still say, I honor God. I honor God. I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't know how it feels right now. But I'm going to praise God. Amen? See, I've had my midnight. You know, I can't talk about yours. You can talk about yours. That's why I say tell your testimony. Give people your message. But I remember a time when I had given my all. I had preached my heart out in Africa. I had studied before I left for weeks on end. I knew I was going to a country that was savage. I knew that I was pushing my body harder than I maybe should have or maybe could have. And I would get up at early in the morning because they start to sing at four, five, six o'clock in the morning outside your windows when you're in Africa. And so I would wake up to them singing and praising God. And the conviction would be upon me because I'd say, how can they do that in the midst of all this red dirt? 
They cover their furniture with fabric because they call it African snow because every time you wake up in the morning, what was clean is now dirty. They don't have paved roads. They don't have lights. They don't have, you know, internal vacuum systems. No, it, it, it's filthy there. It's dark there. And even now, today, yes, there's beautiful places, but that's not where God sent me. And I remember them singing, and I'd get up in the morning, and at 8 o'clock in the morning, I would have to be ready to teach. And we would teach from 8 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. Now, you don't think that's a long time because you work that long. But do you work that long in a concrete building with a tin roof? With the temperatures soaring of 80s, 90s, and 100 degrees, no air conditioning, no wind? And they still wear winter coats because to them it's still chilly it hasn't gone that far yet and so I'm sweating literally sweating and I, I, I see that so many of them are sick with malaria and I'm preaching my heart out and then the day is over we have tea we have just a little time to eat and then we go minister in the bush and so when I come home I'm tired and all of a sudden my body starts to have growths on it on my legs on my knees on my on my elbows on my shoulders some some of those marks are still on my body and I remember my arm hurting so bad for nine months see that my arm I didn't care if it fell off and went down the drain do you understand I didn't have what Darlene Bishop had I had faith that God would heal me but when it got so bad that the pain was ravaging that I looked at my husband and I said take me to the hospital and let him cut my arm off I don't care anymore and he said baby just wait till morning can I tell you congregation just wait till morning just wait till morning I know it feels like midnight I know that you have ashes but God promises beauty for ashes I know that you feel like the biological talk clock is ticking I know that you feel like maybe your opportunity to be a mother isn't there maybe you are a mother and you don't even want to be one anymore it wasn't the dream that you thought it would be it, you're, you're a father now and you know what it's not what you thought it would be let me tell you something there's a lady in the bible her name is mary and it did not turn out the way mary thought it would be she was a spouse to joseph but she became pregnant while she was a spouse that means while she was already considered married it wasn't like a ring and, a, and, a, and an engagement no this was like the real thing and she has to tell her husband she's pregnant you sometimes you have to tell the person you love something really hard you have to tell him, I was unfaithful. You have to tell him, I spent more than I should. You have to tell him, I ran up a charge card. You have to tell him, I don't love you anymore. You have to tell him, there is no money for that. You have to tell him that you can't take it anymore. You have to tell him that I have an addiction. I have a pornographic addiction. I have an alcohol addiction. I've been hiding this from you. But you know what? You cannot hide it from God. You might be in the hard times. It might be the hardest time of your life. But can I tell you, God, if you honor him in the hard time, he will make all things work for good for those that love him and are called according to his purposes. He will not lie to his own hurt. I stand before you with two arms today because I waited through my midnight. And when the morning came, Pastor James was there. I picked up that microphone and I began to give honor to God. I began to praise God. And all of a sudden, immediately, for the first time in nine months, my pain was gone. It didn't exist anymore. I could move my arm. I could lift the, the weight of anything. My body changed. Can I tell you, I don't know what it was like when Mary was carrying Jesus. I don't know what Joseph thought all those nine months. That must have been a hard time looking at her and thinking, I want to believe, but that's not mine. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking it was going to be like this. This is not what I had planned. The, see, the devil comes to ruin your plan. But God says, no, 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 devil. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I'm greater than the devil. And you know what? I've got a plan for my people too. And your plan's not going to work for my people. I am going to be the one that calls the shots in my people. And see, when he did that, immediately 
when the baby was born. It, Joseph, in the hard times, I honor God. I believe you, Mary. I'll marry you anyway, Mary. I won't put you away, Mary. Come on, Mary. Come on, hard times. Riding a donkey pregnant, that's pretty hard. Yeah. Having a honeymoon on the run to Egypt, that's pretty hard. But you know what was good? They honored God anyway, and God paid for the honeymoon. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh came in their hard time. Can I tell you, there's some gold, frankincense, and myrrh coming in your hard time. Amen? If you'll just believe God, if you'll just honor God, He'll give you things that you won't think that you'd be able to ever have. Having a baby in a manger, finding out the, uh, the, there's a king coming to kill your baby. Hallelujah. And God says, hey, you kids need three years off. You guys need a honeymoon. Here's some gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Go to Egypt. Have a good time. Because he didn't take his carpenter's tools. So, you know, I don't believe he was working when he was there. He might have been working it, hallelujah, but he wasn't working. Come on, he was enjoying the wife of his youth, amen? He was finally allowed to enjoy his wife. Can I tell you, honor God in the hard times, and God will take care of you. He will work all things for good. You know, unfortunately, many Christians have used this passage of Scripture flippantly, arrogantly, even condemning hurting people for not having enough faith. But this is not the intention here. God's Word encourages us to remember, no matter what situation or circumstance we face in life, God, our Heavenly Father, will take it and make it. Amen? Not all good things, He says. Not all easy things, he says. Not all wonderful things, he says. He doesn't add a description to what all things are. He just says all things. Fill in the blank. I like that. He gives me a blank check of all things that are going to work for his good. Not all things when you're young. Not all things when you're obeying God. Not all things when everything's perfect. Not all things when you've done everything right. No, he says all things work together for good for those that love God I don't know about you but I've loved God all my life but I've not done right all my life but he still made things work out right come on can you say that that you've loved God all your life but you've not done right all your life see you've got to honor him for it you can't just take it for granted you honor him for it honor pr produces favor in your life Honor opens doors for you. Honor brings you into the kingdom. See, believe that because Emmanuel lives, which means God's with us, he's walking with us, he's walking beside us, he's in us, we are victorious. The moment we repent of our sins and accept Christ as our personal Savior, we join the winning team. When we're distressed, when we're troubled, at the point of not knowing what words to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes on behalf of us groaning maybe in another language maybe but we begin to walk in faith and expectation and trusting God to take us through whatever we're facing knowing he's working it out in ways that are not made manifest yet I had no idea that he was going to heal me instantly I thought I, he was going to heal me by removing my arm you know sometimes they heal diabetics by cutting off a limb and, you know, as a woman, I wanted both arms. I wanted to be a whole my grandchildren. I wanted to be able to embrace my husband. I wanted to be able to change my own bed sheets and brush my own hair. I wanted to be able to change my own great-grandchildren's diapers. I wanted both my arms. But see, I was at the point of compromise. I'm not proud of that. Have you ever been to the point of compromise? Where things aren't working and you can't take the pain anymore, so you just want to compromise? I just need some relief. You know, if I just do a little of this, or I just do a little bit of that, or if I just go here, or I just get, if I just compromise just a little. See, I was willing to compromise against my flesh by cutting my arm off. What area of compromise are you willing to compromise in in your area of flesh? Maybe you're willing to compromise in the area of flesh of lying. Because you're afraid of how somebody will take the truth. Maybe your area of compromise in the flesh is to numb out, to drink, to take a drug, to buy a new this, to buy a new that, to move here, to move there, to change churches, to deny God, to become an atheist. I don't know. I just know what mine was. But see, 
It's in those moments of compromise. If we stand strong, you may be knocked out. You may fall on the ground, but get up because the winner is living on the inside of you. You might take a few hits. The war might be tough, but the battle's not over. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 11 says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'll break this down for you, but here's what he's saying. When things are really bad, and you give God honor anyway, Jesus Christ is shown through you, and Jesus is the glory of God. And so we make the glory of God manifest on the earth when we honor God when it doesn't look like anything good is going to happen. Because only God can do that. Jesus said, you don't take my life, I give it. He said, you see this body, it's going to be down, but it'll come back again in three days. You see this breast, if it rots off and falls down the sink, he's my healer anyway, and I'll praise him anyway. You see this arm, if you'll just wait till morning, honey, and you still want me to go to the hospital to take it off, I'll go with you, baby, but you just wait till morning. And in the morning when that mic went in that hand, praise came through this mouth, and that arm was completely healed. I'm asking you, wait till morning. I'm asking you to let the glory of God be manifested through you. In that rotten marriage, you talk like it's the best. When those kids are rotten, you say they're just working on their testimony. Amen? When when you're waiting on your husband, just say he always saves the best for last. When, When you're worried about your biological clock ticking and the hands moving, you just say, just call me Sarah. If he did it once, he can do it again. Amen? You men that are single and you're thinking, you know, I just want to watch. Don't you worry, Abraham. Things will be all right with you. Amen? See, it ain't over till it's over. And we're going to honor God in the midst of. We're going to honor God in the hard times. We're going to be a peculiar people because you know what? That's peculiar to honor God in the hard times, isn't it, though? Hallelujah. And so it says, but we may be of God and not of us. Yeah, it's God. When you honor him in the midst of that, it's not you. That's exactly right. It's God. We are hard-pressed. Listen, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. When she was rinsing that out, that was by the power of God, not of her. When my husband was saying that to his wife who was reeling in pain, that was not of God, that, uh, that was not of him, that was of God. When I said, yes, I'll wait till morning, that was not of me, that was of God. What are you able to say? It's not of me, it's of God. Because he says this, we are hard pressed on every side. That's a good place to say amen. (laughs) All right? Yet not crushed. We are perplexed. Amen. But we are not in despair. Persecuted. Amen. But not forsaken. Struck down. Amen. But not destroyed. Always, always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. The word glory, I told you in verse 6 there, in the Greek, it's doxa, D-O-X-A. And it is also translated throughout Scripture, honor. So the honor that we desire to give to God is seen in the manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ in us in the hard times. In us in the good times, in us, in the sacrificial times, in us, at all times. Amen? Because we're so good? No, because he's so good. Because we're earthen vessels, we're a bunch of crackpots, but his light shines through. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. This is earlier in the first book of the church at Corinth. Paul wrote this. For you see your calling, brethren... See, he's talking to the church. Do you see your calling, brethren? Not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Oh, that makes me feel much better, doesn't it, you? 
That makes me feel like he can use me too. Come on, does it make you feel like he can use you too? Do I need to shake that bush again? For you see your calling, brethren, how many not wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God. Look at your neighbor and say, but God. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh, no flesh should glory in his sight. See, I get out of the way when you see the glory. I get out of the way when you see his manifest praise. I manifest his glory, not when I'm still thigh high, when you can still see me. No, 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 I wade way out into the deep. I get in over my head, as Ezekiel 46 says. I get out into the deep things of God where it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And you don't see me anymore, but you see God. And I don't point you to me, I point you to him, amen? That we don't glory in the flesh, but we glory in his manifest presence. No flesh shall glory in his presence. Now we begin to see one of the unexplained paradoxes of the Bible because of the filling of God's Holy Spirit. These unimpressive earthen vessels become remarkably resilient to the challenges of life, allowing God to be honored in the hard times. They become these incredible beacons of life in any culture, through any challenge, in all persecutions, beyond any political leader, beyond any cultural times, we still speak of those that give honor to God in the hard times. Let me give you a few points before we close today. Number one, affliction does not bring destruction. Affliction does not bring destruction. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. And I read that scripture to you about trouble on every side. But let me tell you something. For an earthen vessel to endure all of this only magnifies the life of Christ inside of them. Affliction does not bring destruction. Affliction, number two, is for the purpose of purification. When you're going through affliction, it is not to destroy you. It is not for destruction. It is for the poot, number two, the purpose of purification. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. It says, for our light affliction. I don't know about you, but I haven't had much light affliction. It seems like it's been pretty dark affliction to me. But it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That, that weight of glory, again, manifest presence or honor of God that you be able to see God in my light affliction. Charles Spurgeon, I love him, he said this, God's choice makes chosen men choice men. We are chosen not in the palace, but in the furnace. In the furnace, beauty is marred, fashion is destroyed, strength is melted, glory is consumed, yet here in the furnace, Eternal love reveals its secret strength. Isn't that beautiful? All too quickly, I'm prone to stop here with my purification. In my understanding of why God puts us through the fire, however, this is stopping short of God's ultimate purpose of bringing glory to himself. See, it's okay to mention your name in the sentence, but God has to be added on. So number one, affliction does not bring destruction. Number two, affliction is for the purpose of purification. Number three, affliction brings about transformation. Isaiah 48.10 says, Behold, I have refined thee. When you're going through the refining process, it's not your boss. It's not me. It's not Apostle Joe. It's God. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Isn't it nice to know in the furnace he's chose you? Right where you are in the, in the fire, he chose you. Transformations, look, I, I just did a transformation on my house. Usually come at a great cost. The cost to transform land is very expensive, but not nearly as costly as what we often personally experience in God's work of transforming our lives. When you compare the work of transforming my old house floors to new house floors, my old bathroom into a new bathroom, it's nothing compared to what he's done in me. 
in the furnace of affliction of losing my firstborn. After 16 days, the furnace of affliction of my home burning down. See, I've lived long enough to go through some things that I know God works all things for good. In the furnace of affliction of, of health, the furnace of affliction of losing my father, my hero, I can say God is good and he has worked all things for good and I give him honor. If I had to do it all over again to be where I am today, I'd do it all over again. And that came with much transformation. Here's an illustration. Mount Rushmore was built with some of the harshest tools known to man during its construction. It was not completed with a manicure set. <laughs> it was refined with explosives, hammers, chisels, huge machines. And I will tell you this, it was a transformation of the face of a mountain. But God's not likely to use a manicure set to transform you either. He'll more often use a hammer. Is my word not a hammer, the Bible says? He'll use a chisel. He's often more direct than we would like him to be. And it's only under these circumstances that we can be made into a vessel fit for the master's use. A.W. Tozer said this, If God has singled you out to be a special object of his grace, you may expect him to honor you with stricter discipline. I said that. And greater suffering. I said that. Then less favored ones are called upon to endure. So when you're going through a hard time, just say, I'm so favored. <laughs> God loves me so much. Look at him chiseling me. Look at him hammering me. Amen? See, we got to remember this so that we can do this, which is communion. Because he says, do this in remembrance of me. Well, you know what? It's in the hard times that you really remember him. In the good times, sometimes you forget about him. But in the hard times, if you give him honor and you give him glory and you say what you know you're supposed to say instead of what you want to say and you do what you're supposed to do and everything in you wants to do something else, then he's manifested. Then his glory is seen. Amen.